good morning everyone now today we will discuss about electoral politics which is a part of your political science chapter 3 and now in this chapter we will discuss about elections why elections what makes elections democratic is it good to have political competition after that we will discuss about what is our system of election and what makes elections in india democratic and the last topic is challenges to free and fair elections and i think you all are aware about these pictures images you can easily recognize that these are related with elections acche din aane wale hain ab ki baar modi sarkar these are the different political parties who contest elections so now what is an election when we are talking about election election means a mechanism a system by which people choose their representatives because we are living in a democratic country and major decisions are taken by elected representative and to choose representatives election is the best way but these elections should be at regular intervals and change the representatives if they will not work according to the wishes of people in an election the voters make many choices they can choose who will make laws for them they can choose who will form the government and take major decisions they can choose the party whose policy will guide the government and law making so this is an election election procedures that allows members of an organization or community to choose representatives who will hold positions of authority within it the most important elections in our country that is national level in which we select the leaders of national government not only national government we choose we select the leaders of state and local government also. the chance to decide who will govern at these levels serves as an opportunity to the public to make choices about the policies programs and future directions of government action at the same time elections promote accountability that means they are answerable to the citizens whatever the decisions they are taking the threat of the defeat at the polls that is means elections exerts pressure on those in power to conduct themselves in a responsible manner and take account of popular interest and wishes when they make their decisions but why elections why do we need elections elections take place regularly in democracy as we have discussed in chapter number 1 what is democracy why democracy that there are more than 100 countries in the world in which elections take place to choose people's representatives we also read that elections are held in many countries that are not democratic 
And China is the best example where they are having only one party system, but still they conduct elections. So why do we need elections? You just imagine a democracy without election. A rule of the people is possible without any elections. If all the people can sit together every day, as we have discussed in chapter number one, direct democracy. If all the people can sit together every day and take all the decisions, this is not possible in any large community, nor is it possible for everyone to have the time and knowledge to take decisions on all matters. So in most democracies, people rule through their representatives. Is there a democratic way of selecting representatives without elections? Can you do? Think of a place where representatives are selected on the basis of age and experience. Or a place where they are chosen on the basis of education or knowledge. There could be some difficulty in deciding on who is more experienced or knowledgeable. Elections are just like an exams. How can we promote you in next class without exams? What will be the criteria? So elections is a system, a mechanism to choose representatives at regular intervals. And voters have many choices. That is, who will make laws? Who will form the government? First, we have to make the legislature. After that, executive. And choose the party whose policies will guide the government and lawmaking. Now, what makes elections democratic. When we are talking about democratic elections, in the first chapter also we have discussed about elections should be free and fair. That is called democratic elections. Like just now we have discussed about China. So when we are talking about elections democratic, that means minimum conditions of a democratic elections. That is, everyone should be able to choose. This means that everyone should have one vote and every vote should have equal value. Second, there should be something to choose from. That means freedom to choose. Parties and candidates should be free to contest elections and should offer some real choice to the voters. That means the minimum two political parties are required for the elections. Next, the choice should be offered at regular intervals. And regular interval means fixed time for the elections. Like in India, it is five years. In America, it is four years. In Mexico, it is six years. Election, election must be held regularly after every few years. Next, the candidate preferred by the people should get elected. And last, election should be conducted in a free and fair manner where people can choose as they really wish. If you will see, it looked like very simple and easy conditions. But there are many countries where these are not fulfilled. So now, in this chapter, we will just discuss about these conditions to the elections held are in our country 
to see if we can call these democratic elections.